Historically, civil 3D projects have been created and managed on a local server. Today, using BIM 360, civil 3D projects can be stored in the cloud, allowing all stakeholders, regardless of their location, to create and edit civil 3D design files. In this session, we'll look at how to create a cloud-based civil 3D project. Now, at this point, I'm sure you're aware of how a typical Civil 3D project is created. Generally speaking, we visit the Manage tab, and then using a combination of these tools in the Data Shortcuts panel, we select a working folder where we place the project folder that contains our desired directory structure. I'm going to close this. Because I want my project hosted in the cloud, I will instead set things up using BIM 360. I'll start by launching my web browser, and I'll log into BIM 360 as the account admin. It's important to note that an account admin designation is required to create projects. If you are not a designated account admin, you should reach out to the person in your office who manages your BIM 360 account. They will likely be an account admin and will have the ability to grant admin rights to other users when necessary. From the Account Admin area, selecting Projects will show a listing of all BIM 360 projects stored in the account. To create a new project, I'll click the Add button. I can then fill out the Project Profile page. For this example, I'm going to call the project Route 25 Improvements. I will then choose a project type. I can pick one from this list, or I can create a new one by typing it in this box. For this example, I'm going to create a project type called Roadway Improvements, and then I'll click to select it. I'll set the construction type to New. Note that there are a lot of entries here. You can fill out as much or as little of this profile as you want. The only items that require an entry are the ones having an asterisk. To wrap things up, I'm going to select a project icon, and I'll type in an address that represents the project location. When I'm finished, I'll scroll down and choose Save and Continue. I can then activate the necessary BIM 360 services for this project. I'll click to activate the Document Management Service. The service is also known as BIM 360 Docs. Among other things, the service controls the directory structure of the project. By default, all new projects are created having just two folders, Plans and Project Files. From there, you can create as many additional folders and subfolders as you like. Knowing that, if you have an existing BIM 360 project that already has an established directory structure, you can apply that structure to a new project using the Copy Project Settings menu. I would do that by opening this menu, and then I can scroll down and find the project, or I can use the search bar at the top to go right to it. As an example, I'm going to type PR9733, the project we looked at in the previous session. Now, in this case, we're going to assume that I don't have an existing project to work from, so I will cancel by clicking outside the menu. This will ensure our new project is created having the default structure. I will then assign myself as the project admin for this project. Notice that I'm designating the project administrator using an email address. BIM 360 will use this address to invite the user to the project and notify them of their administrator status. I'll click Save when finished. Additional project administrators can also be assigned at this time, or they can be assigned at any point in the future. Let's scroll down and we'll talk for a second about the Design Collaboration Service. This service is associated with BIM 360 Design and provides the work groups, swim lanes, and packages used frequently by folks collaborating on Revit models. At the time of this recording, the only BIM 360 Design entitlement leveraged by Civil 3D is the license itself. Since these tools do not yet apply to Civil 3D, we can hold off on activating the service. At this point, I'm finished activating services, so I will scroll down and click the Finish button. This adds the new project to the list. I can then scroll down to find it, or as this list becomes long, I can use the search bar at the top. If I select the new project, I can see that I'm the only member so far. Also, notice that I'm in the Project Admin module. If I click the Module Selector, otherwise known as the Waffle, I can jump to the Document Management module and review the default directory structure. So at this point, my initial project directory has been created. Let's do one more thing. Let's verify that this project is also available on my local machine. I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer, and then I'll double-click to open BIM 360. I'll double-click to select my account. I will then select the Route 25 Improvements project. In the event a new project doesn't show up right away, make sure to press the F5 key to refresh the display. 
Once I get into the project, notice that we are only seeing one of the two folders. That's because these two folders actually represent two separate areas within BIM 360. Think of each one as being its own unique directory structure. The Desktop Connector utility is designed to sync content stored in the Project Files folder only. That's why it's the only folder that we see on the local machine. For this reason, all of your Civil 3D design files and references will be stored inside this folder such that they can be synced to the cloud and made available to other stakeholders. Remember, we are not limited to using just this one folder. We can create additional subdirectories as well. As an example, I'm going to double click to open project files and then I'll right click and choose new folder and I'll call the folder drawings. I could then go on and create as many additional folders and subfolders as needed. If you use consistent folders for all of your projects, remember that as future BIM 360 projects are created, you can simply point back to this one to replicate the directory structure. All right, so we have our Civil 3D cloud project set up. The next thing we need to do is invite the stakeholders who will participate in the design, and we'll do that in the next session. Would you like to explore additional Autodesk Cloud Collaborative ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the AEC Connection blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.